Hey everybody, it's Matt McNeil, sitting here on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, actually, I haven't been doing much work with Amy because I've been working on these guys. Check it out, we got five more Michaels, uh, waiting on eyeballs and earrings. Uh, second verse is the same as the first. Uh, as soon as I get those eyeballs and earrings, these guys are gonna be in the mail, and I'll be on to number 16 through 20. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, back to Amy. While I have not been sculpting directly on Amy's face so much lately, I'm, I'm starting to feel like uh, she's pretty close, and if I keep working on her, I'm just gonna make it worse. Uh, but uh, I did wanna say, I've had a few questions about, what am I gonna do with this? A big old opening in her mouth. Um, and that's a really good question that uh, when I started sculpting, I figured, oh, you know what, I'll figure it out later. Well, guess what, now is later. So what I did is, um, I decided that maybe I would give the uh, a day in court printing a mouth interior for Amy uh, so that, like in the movie, she's got these teeth. She's got, uh, obviously, the sides of her lips here. And if you look really close in the movie, you can actually see Amanda Bierce's mouth interior through here. So I have printed a mouth interior. Uh, and it just finished, so that's why I figured I'd come on here and take a look. Let me put on a glove, because anybody that knows anything about 3D printing knows that this stuff is pretty toxic, and you gotta wear gloves. So let me get this glove on with my teeth. <laughs> and let's open this bad boy up and see what we got. All right, here we go. And then I'm gonna set the phone down just for a second. Hold tight, hold on. Cause I wanna open up my little alcohol shaker here. Cause that's what you have to do is after you pull something out of a 3D printer, you put it in a little alcohol bath and you can even put it into one of these things, which is a uh, ultrasonic jewelry cleaner. But, uh, oh yeah, it looks like we've got something here. Let's see, can I break it off without pulling it out? I don't think so. So. I actually bought these, ooh, these, uh, oh, it came off, perfect. Uh, but I did buy these plates. I don't know if anybody's got a 3D printer, has been looking at these plates that keep getting advertised. They're awesome, because your print sticks to them, and then on top of that, you can pull them off and flex the plate, and it'll break whatever you printed loose. Oh boy, that's a big boy. That might be the biggest thing that I've ever printed. Pretty great. Uh, all right, so let's put the top on this guy. Actually, oh, look at that. That's what happens when you try to use one hand. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I need to put this on first. So that creates an extra seal so I don't go sloshing alcohol and print resin all over my face. Because guess what? That happens here. I'm going to sit you down again. Hold on one second, guys and gals. Let's get this thing on here good. All right. I'm just going to shake it a little bit. And what this does is, whenever you 3D print something, it comes out of this like primordial goo and sticks to the bottom of that plate. That's how resin printing works, as opposed to a regular 3D printer, which, which prints from the top and squirts out layers of molten plastic. The reason that a resin printer's resolution is so much better is because the layers can be so much thinner as a result of it being pulled out of this goo. And basically there's a little monitor down there that exposes the resin, which is UV sensitive, and it cures the resin one tiny layer at a time, a fractional layer at a time, as it pulls it up out of that resin bath. If you look, that's just resin fluid. Uh, hold on one second, I'm gonna set you down one more time. Let's open this guy up. Let's see what we got here. All right, Get a paper towel. I got this stuff all over my hands. All right, here we go. I have not really even taken a look yet myself. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. So what I did was I molded or modeled that tongue. You can see it in there. Uh, and this is still wet from the alcohol and whatnot. That's why it's sort of shiny and kind of slick looking. But uh, what then you do is I take it and I set it in front of a Halloween UV light and that further cures the resin. Uh, I probably ought to hollow this thing out because there's probably a lot of unused and uncured resin in there. Uh, and it's a, it's a waste of resin, quite frankly. But uh, anyway, for a first print, 
Holy crap, that's awesome. So what you would do is you would paint this separate from the display. And if you ordered a blank, you would cut that, cut that mouth out. And then you'd put these guys inside there. Can you see that? So these would set in behind these lips here, right? And then you put these guys back there, uh, paint it up. Uh, and the question is, how do you paint them? Do you want to paint them? Probably ought to paint them black, right? Because I think they put like some black ink. Maybe what you would do is paint them realistically and then, you know, put some black on them so it looks like she would have on set. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I'm still kind of figuring all this out as I go. But uh, anyway, I think that's a pretty cool uh, idea to have a, a mouth like this inset. Now, how am I gonna, am I gonna get this thing in there? Who knows? That's the fun of this, right? We'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, hope that's interesting to somebody. Um, I'm certainly happy with the way this came out. Even if it doesn't work for her, this is kind of a cool thing uh, that maybe in the future, you know, I could, like I did with these teeth, stick it on the front of an armature and sculpt around, and then I will have a perfect mouth um, stuck in my mold. Uh, and maybe I would do it like I do the eye blanks where you leave the eye blanks in the mold. That's a good question too. I'm thinking about leaving these resin teeth inside the mold so that when I pour my latex, much like the, the resin or the, uh, the eye blanks, you end up with a perfect pocket for your printed teeth or your customized or whatever, but it allows you to insert these kinds of things in there very, very, very simply, uh, so that whoever's finishing them, uh, hopefully me, uh, but, uh, if, if I'm not finishing it, then someone that gets this and they end up with a set of teeth, they just pop them in. They don't have to dremel them out. Because one of the things I will tell you is, as cool as these teeth came out for Michael, I didn't do the teeth first. And as a result, I ended up, you know, having to sort of shoehorn those things in there, dr dremel them, grind them out, uh, make them fit and all of that. And it would have been much easier had I built these teeth first. So um, that's what I did here. But of course, I like making problems for myself. Here's, here's my next problem. But uh, it looks like a kind of a cool problem to have. So anyway, there you go. That's, uh, that's a set of teeth that I just 3D printed for the inside of Amy's mouth. Uh, maybe these will be uh, part of the deluxe version because this did take like two hours to print. And that's a lot of resin. So I, I got to figure out what these things cost. But um, at the same time, seriously, how cool is that? Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, hope everybody's having a good day. And if you're in your garage or your shop working, uh, have fun. Uh, make some cool stuff.